Okay, so we had some more problems last class, and um, the way that those things were set up was you had to make a table out of it. So you had two x values and two y values. Um, we're going to look at some other word problems today, but they're 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 giving us different information, and so the process of getting we're going to do the same thing. We're going to get an equation out of it, but the, the thing is that the process is a little bit different because they're giving us different stuff. Okay, so. What I'm going to give you today, instead of an x, two x's and two y's, I'm, I'm going to give you the starting amount. I did that last time too, but um, I'm not. In addition, I'm going to give you some public growth rate. And we'll, we'll see how you can use that. Um, so, what what is a growth rate? Well, last class, at the end of class, we remember how we talked about percent increase and percent decrease. Uh, a growth rate is basically that that percent that you're increasing by or decreasing by. Okay, so that's what a um, growth rate is when you're talking about exponential functions, they can have growth rates associated with them. Of every time you have an exponential function, they, they increase or they decrease, right? And the percentage by which they increase or decrease over time is called the growth rate. All right, so here, here's an example. Um, suppose that you invested um, $400 into a bank account, and the bank promises to give you 50% interest every year, which means they're adding 50% of what you have into your account total. So let's complete the table. Well, um, we talked about how to do that. If I wanted to increase this by 50%, what would I what would I multiply it by? What is it? Close. 1.5, right? So if you did 0.5, you'd be finding 50%. But if you want to increase it by 50%, you do 1.5. In other words, you do 1 plus the percentage in decimal form, right? So if I multiply that by 1.5, I would get 600, okay? Now, let's say every year they do that. So after one year goes by, now I've got six hundred dollars because they increased my account by fifty percent. Which, by the way, that's completely unrealistic. No bank would ever do that. They go they go broke. But um, I just like to pick fifty because it's easy. Um, but now another year goes by. So now they're going to take what you had and they're going to give you another fifty percent increase. So if I multiply that by one point five, I would get nine hundred. Okay. I'll do one more. Another year goes by, they give you another 50% increase. That would be, I think it's 1350. I'm just doing that in my head, but I'm pretty sure that's right. Thank you. All right, now we were working on some of these um, types of problems yesterday, and, and what we've seen so far is, is we've seen that with an exponential function, what is the, in a, story, in a word problem, what does the A represent? Did it yesterday. What? That, that's true. So if you're thinking about in terms of graphing, yes, it's a y-intercept. Um, in the story problems, do you guys remember how yesterday in our story problems, the first one I gave you was always the A value? Okay. Well, it's the, it's the starting amount. This is your starting amount. And you remember where the B was at, right? It was this number here. Well, on this one, we actually know our B. It's what we're multiplying by over and over again. So this is our growth factor. Now, that I'm giving you guys two words here. Growth rate and growth factor. They're different things. The growth rate is 50%. But once you add that to 1, that gives you your B value, which is called your growth factor. Well, I have some notes for you on that in a minute, so you don't have to write that down. But this is how we've been setting up our exponential function so far. The starting amount has gone here, and the growth factor goes here. Well, I can turn this into an equation now. What's my starting amount of money that I started with at the very beginning? 400. What's my growth factor? Well, that's my growth rate, but what's my growth factor? 1.5. And there's my exponential function. Okay. So that, that's how we're going to do it today. Instead of giving you, it's actually a little bit easier, I think, than, than um, the lessons from yesterday. Um, 
because yesterday we had to figure out what B was. On this one, you still have to figure out what B is, but it's a little bit easier. All you have to do is take the growth rate that they give you, change it to a decimal, and add it to your one, and you've got your growth factor. Okay, so a lot of times when it comes to exponential functions, that is how they give you the data. They give, they tell you the growth rate, and so from there you, you figure out what the equation is. Um, let, let's take a look at another example really quick here. Um, suppose that you drink 16 ounces of coffee, and as your body, and well, I think I mistyped that, but it says, and your body metabolizes, that means it burns it up, uses it, whatever. Your body metabolizes the coffee. It, it, it does that and it manages to eliminate 25% of the caffeine in your body every hour. So now we're losing some, right? So um, I'm losing 25%. So instead of one plus, what am I going to have? One minus, and I'm going to subtract from it what? 0.25, this thing here. So that's 100%. I'm losing 25%, which leaves me with what? And that's my growth factor. In other words, I'm starting with 16. And every time I go down a step, I'm only going to be left with 75% of what I started with. So how do I find 75% of this? Well, we multiply it. Uh, I'm going to say 12. Maybe if you guys want to check me, you can, but thank you. If you do 16 times 0.75, you get 12. Um, I think the next one's 9. If you take 75% of that, you're left with 9. So we start off with 16. Because we're losing 25%, every hour that goes by, I'm only left with 75%. 75% of 16 is 12. 75% of 12 in the second hour leaves me with only 9. By the time I get to the third hour, I, I can't do that mentally because it's not, it's not a nice whole number. It's the decimal. I can't do it. Um, but you can do it on your calculator if you want to, but I'm not going to do it. But we can turn this into a, an exponential function now. What's my starting amount? 16. 16. What's my growth factor? 0.75. And there's the equation of that. So that's what we're doing today. Um, this is kind of like a, an introduction. We'll go through it a little bit more slow, um, but that's the idea. So. All right, so we've, I've given you guys two words now. Growth factor, growth rate, they sound a lot alike, but they are different. Growth rate is the percentage that they give you. You might want to add that you know so you know that oh that's the one that's the percent and if your function is increasing then you're going to add the growth rate to one if your function is decreasing then you're going to subtract your growth rate from one and if you do that you get your growth factor okay so just like on the last slide that we had if i did one take away 0.25 that gave me 0.75, which is my growth factor. Um, now, instead of writing the words growth factor and growth rate, we're going to use letters. What letter have I been using for growth factor so far? B. B is equal to 1 plus or minus growth rate. We're going to call that R from now on. So that's, that's what we're going to use for a little formula there. All right. Are we good? Can I Um. All right. So we've we've seen this before, right? And you guys might recall that when your group when B is bigger than one, we haven't done this in a few days, so you guys might have forgotten, but. Do you remember that the shape of the graph looks like this? Goes upwards. Right? And
and that when b is less than 1, it's decreasing. So the graph goes, uh, sorry, goes downward. This is growth. We call that growth, and this is decay. But for today's word problems, instead of using this formula, I'm going to make a little change. Instead of using B, I'm going to use this. B is equal to 1 plus or minus R, we just said, right, on the last slide. So I'm going to write the formula like this today because on the word problem we're working with, they're going to give me a growth rate, so that's helpful just to have the R there. But um, Now... When your R is positive, that means you're adding, when your function's increasing, so you're adding your growth rate in, your B, your growth rate's going to be bigger than 1. Because like if you take 1 and you add 0.5, you get a number bigger than 1, right? So that's exponential growth. If, you're, if your function's decreasing, like with the caffeine example I gave you, you're going to subtract your rate from, your, from 1, and that gives you a B value that's less than 1, so it's BK. All right, so... And you might want to label this, if you haven't already done so in the last slide, you might want to label that as the starting amount. The A is the starting amount. This is the growth rate, which remember, that's a percentage. And the B is the growth factor. that up there for a little bit because there's some stuff you need to add on. Okay, so let's take a look at our first example here. Um, give you guys a little science lesson. I don't know if you've ever heard of radiocarbon dating. Um, it, it's one of the things that um, scientists do um, to determine how old some artifact is that they dig up out of the ground. Okay, so every living organism, whether it's a, a you know like an animal like us or, or like a tree, for instance. Um, has carbon in it. Um, and so one of these elements is a radioactive form of carbon called C14, and everybody has that in them. Um, and so when a creature dies or a living organism dies, it has a certain amount in there. And over time, since it's radioactive, it melts away. Um, and so basically what they can do is they could dig up some organism, right? And they could say, well, this creature was this big, it must have had this much, I don't know how they would do this honestly, but they say, well, it should have had this much carbon-14 in it. And then they measure how much is in it now, and they say, well, I know how fast carbon-14 melts away, so if it only has this much left, it must be this old. That's how they date it. Okay. Um, so that's what this word problem here is about. And, and those uh, radiocarbon-14 dating is an exponential phenomenon, so they use exponential functions to model that. So, the concentration of C14 atoms in a 200 milligram, if you're starting now, 200 milligram uh, organic specimen decays. Okay, that's an important thing to pay attention to. So, the amount of C14 in a 200 milligram sample decays at a rate of 11.4% every 1,000 years. Write a function for the concentration of C14 atoms of this 200 milligram sample after 2,000 years. So I've circled the important stuff here in this, this story problem. Um, the 200, that's my starting amount. That's my A value. Okay. Um, the DK, that tells me that we are subtracting the growth rate. 
We're not adding, we're subtracting. It's losing C14 over time. And this 11.4% tells me what my R is. My R is point, if I change this into a decimal, right? We move the decimal over twice. It's going to be 0.114. That's my growth rate. Okay, so let's begin answering the question. What's the starting amount? We've already got it up there. It's 200 milligrams. That's how much is in the specimen to begin with. Is it growth or decay? Well, it tells us right here it's decay. What is the growth rate? We've got that right there, 0.114. So far, they're just based, those first three questions I gave you is just analyzing the word problem, pulling out the important information. Um, the fourth one, though, we're going to have to do a little bit of math. They're asking for the growth factor. So for that, I'm going to show my work over here for the sake of space. Uh, the growth factor is equal to 1 plus or minus R, and we said it's going to be what? Minus. So, that's my growth factor, B, is equal to 1 minus R. We said R is 0.114, so I'm losing 11%. Let's do a little subtraction and find out what we're left with there. 1 take away 0.114 is 0.886. That's my growth factor. So that's, I, if I'm losing 11% approximately every 1,000 years, then every 1,000 years we're only left with 88% is what that means. Okay. So now we're going to write an equation for this. So it's y equals my starting amount goes here. My growth factor goes here. And um, it says to use T instead of X, so I'll use T for that instead. But there's my exponential function. All right, number six, use your function to determine how much will remain after 5,000 years. So T represents 1,000 years. So if you plug in one, that, that means 1,000 years. So if you were to plug in 1, then you're taking 88% of 200 one time, and that tells you what's left after 1,000 years. If you want to find out how much is left after 5 years, then you have to do 88% 5 times. In other words, 88% to the fifth power. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to take our starting amount, and it's going to get multiplied by 88% 5 times. And so this is a calculated thing. So you should be able to just type that right in your calculator and get an answer. We, we did that yesterday, so give it a shot. I'll put my answer up. Make sure you're, you know how to use these. Make sure you know it's to the fifth power. It's not times five. It's to the fifth power. You should be getting um, 109.194. I'll, I'll stop there. So what this means you guys, is that we started off with 200 milligrams. After 5,000 year, 5, years goes by, we're left with 109 milligrams. So it, it decays very slowly, which is nice because since it decays slowly, you can really find, you could date things pretty old. Um, they take so long to decay. All right. So, so I want you guys to uh, read the, the um, problem here, and I want you guys to answer the first three questions, and I'm going to ask you about those in just a second. Uh, five. Yeah, so that the starting amount is 20 cells. Good. Uh, number two. Jedrick, what, what did you get for number two? This one's growth. Now, I don't think it says the word growth, but it does say increases. And so anytime you have this sense of it, the amount is increasing, that's a growth situation. Um, number three, Cynthia, what is the growth rate? 5%. Good. 
Now, as a decimal, Lily, what would 5% be as a decimal? Great. 0 0.05. Okay, now we need to find our growth factor. So I'll let you guys do that for a second. Um, but before we do, it's going to be this thingy. But I'm going to ask another person. Uh, Crystal, are we going to do plus R or minus R this time? Plus. That's right. Because it's a um, it's an increasing problem, so we would add. So I'll let you guys go ahead and work that out, and I'll ask you what you got in just a second. So that, that would give us 1.05. That's my growth factor. Um, go ahead and write your exponential function now. Um, all right, now see if you guys can figure this one out. Now, I, I want you guys to remember, what, what does um, what these things represent? Um, notice this thing increases 5% every what? Hour, okay? Um, how many hours are we looking at here? We're looking at 24 hours there. They say one day, but remember, we're doing hours, so you got to convert that. So go ahead and answer number six. So I'll let you guys practice a little bit um, just to kind of work out some bugs if you have any. Um, we got some student practices there. Um, all right, so go ahead and um, do what you can there. I'll give you guys, I don't know, we'll see how much time you need. But uh, go ahead and work on them, and we'll call you up to share your answers with us. So, guys, our, our next example, um, it's not new. It's the same stuff, but I've asked the question differently, and so the way you extract the information is a little bit different, okay? But the idea is the same. So, on this, what we did in the last ones was I gave you the information, and you created an equation. On this one, I give you the equation and ask for the information, Okay. And there's only one part in here that I, that I think is maybe a little bit uh, not right there to grab. You have to kind of work for it a little bit, but the rest is, is pretty okay. So let, let's, let's go ahead and get started here. So it says the amount of money that a person makes at a job is modeled by this equation here, where Y represents how much money they've got and how much money they're making per year, and T represents what year. So basically what this is saying is that this person's working at a job, they have a yearly salary. Every year that yearly salary is either increasing or decreasing. It would probably be increasing, right? It'd be not a good job to go to if they lowered your wage every year, but I don't want to give the answer away. But yeah, um, there we go. So you, you can tell by looking at this, some of the stuff. So like for instance, what's the starting pay? Well, we know that the first number, that's your starting number. So that would be 40,000. So you can just look at it and grab it. What's the growth factor? That's the number that's in the parentheses there. So we can just write it. Now, is this growth or decay? Aside from the fact that maybe it's obvious that at a job your, your salary would go up every year, so it's obviously growth, um, I want to give you a more mathematical explanation because sometimes it may not be obvious from the story problem. How can we tell that this is growth? Well. We know this is growth because B, which is 1.06, is greater than 1. Remember, if B is bigger than 1, it's an increasing function or a growth function. If B is less than 1, then it's a decreasing function. Um, Number four, what's the growth rate? Now, that, that's going to take a little bit of um, thought here. Um, I'm actually going to skip the last question because it's just a repeat almost. Um, just a second. Okay, so th this, this part here is... is probably the one that takes a little bit of thought, okay, so let, let's be mindful of it. So first of all, I want my growth rate. Well, I don't know my growth rate. I don't know the percentage, but, but I do know the growth factor, and I know that those things are related. How are they related? They're related with this formula. The growth factor 
is 1 plus or minus r. So, is it plus r or minus r? It's plus because this is a growth function, right? So, which letter do I know this time? Do I know B or do I know R? This guy, we know B, yeah, we know B. And so instead of plugging my number in over here, I'm going to plug this in over here. And that will help me find out what R is. Now, maybe, maybe you want to make a note of this. Plus is because it's growth, and my B value is 1.06, right? And I'm looking for my growth rate, which is R. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve this. Um, what would I do to solve this? Solve for R. Um, we are going to subtract, but actually I want to get R by itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract the 1 instead. And that leaves me with R equals, what would that be? Yep, 0 0.06. And there's my R. So you can write that as a decimal. Does anybody want to take a guess what that would be as a percent? 6%. Yeah. So this is like the opposite of what we did before. Remember before we're moving the decimal to the left? Well, if you want to go back to a percent, you just move it to the right two spaces and it's 6%. Now, I, I don't know how it'll be on your test. I might write the R in either way. So it could be as a decimal or a percent. So I'll, I'll have you write down both answers. So this, this is the one that takes a little bit more thought. So when you're to find your growth rate, you're going to use B plus. B equals 1 plus or minus R. You have to remember to decide is it plus or minus. And then you have to decide, and you have to remember that the number you're plugging in goes here this time instead of here because they're giving us opposite information than the last ones we had. All right, am I good to roll on? Okay, I'll wait a second. We're going to do one more example together, and that'll be it for the day. I'm not going to um, do the student practices, but we'll do the next example together as a class. Are we okay to move on? All right. Here we go. So read read the paragraph there and answer the first two questions, and then I'll call on you to share out what you got. So read the paragraph at the beginning, answer the first two questions, and then I'll call on you to share out what you got. So you're, you're always going to subtract one here, because you want to get R by itself. So you want to subtract one and get rid of that, and you have R. 1.6 minus 1. 6 and Okay. Um, Niana, what, what did you get for um, number one? That's right. Um, 100 is the starting amount. That's the number in front of the parentheses there. Uh, Michelle, what's the growth factor? Take a moment and answer number three. Give you guys a second for that.
So, uh, DeAndre, what, what did you get for that growth or DK? DK. Why do you think it's DK? It's less than one. Good. The B value is less than one this time. It's point nine eight. So that's a DK. Um, now we've got to figure out the growth rate. That's kind of the the most challenging one. So we're going to use this formula. You have to decide plus or minus, and then you have to put the number, the right number, in the right spot. Okay. So let's let's go ahead and do that bit together here. Alondra, am I going to do plus or minus R? Mm -hmm, because it's DK. And yes, Brittany, what number am I plugging in? Yeah, what number am I going to plug into my little formula here? You know the answer, but that's not what I'm looking for. I know you guys did kind of a little bit different. Um, let me ask you this. What letter is this? Is this B or R? 0.98. Is that the growth factor or growth rate? That's the B. So I'm going to put that right here. Okay, so go ahead and work that out. And change it to a percentage. I think we are kind of tight on time. I'll just... I'll write it out for you guys. And here's the bag zipping. So I'm gonna work this out for you guys a little bit. All right, guys. There's our answers. We'll stop there, obviously, and we'll see you guys. Monday. Monday's going to be a quiz, guys, so I'll upload your study guide for you.